Today we're going to be taking a look at the Thule Passage. This is a trunk mounted 3 bike rack. Part number on it is TH911XT. Now the Passage uses a Thule's Fit Dial technology. This makes it easily customizable to fit a very wide range of vehicles. As you can see, the cradle arms can be stored in the downward position for convenience and then simply rotated up and into position when we're ready to use them. Each set of cradles has the anti-sway technology designed in. Uh, that way we're going to help to prevent or reduce the bike-to-bike -bike contact or bike-to-vehicle content. Now that we've gone over some of the key features of the passage, let's show you how it installs on the vehicle. The first step is going to be to set our fit dial. For our Nissan today, we need to be on number 9. Just refer to Thule's website or their fit guide for more details on the number specific to your vehicle. The first thing we'll do is remove the black wing nuts. They've got a bolt attached to them that goes right through the fit dial. Then we'll rotate it up to the number nine. Once we have it in the appropriate position, we'll put that wing nut back in and snug it down. Per the fit guide, the lower set of pads should be resting directly on top of our bumper. It's a nice, thick, soft pad. This is on the, the lower arm and the upper arm. Uh, it's going to help to protect your vehicle's finish and paint surfaces. So we'll place that right onto the top edge of the bumper. Just rotate the rack up to our glass. We're then going to take our top hooks, connect them in the connection point between the roof line and the rear hatch where they come together. We'll work our way all the way around the rack. We've got six hooks to connect. All the hooks have a nice rubber coated finish on them. Again, just like those pads, it's going to help protect your vehicle's surface and keep you from getting scratches and stuff. Now the straps, we're just going to snug them up for now just to hold the rack in place until we get everything set and we can tighten them down finally. Now with all six of our hooks in place, we're going to go around and tighten up each strap just a little bit at a time until we have it nice and secure. With our strap secure, as you can see, we've got the rack really attached to our car nicely. We'll just tidy up our excess strap. We're now ready to load up our bike, so we'll rotate the cradle arms up into position. And we'll undo our cradle straps. Now each cradle has three channels or grooves in the bottom of it. It's going to help to accommodate any of the brake lines that we may have. It has to have a nice, strong, durable rubber strap. It's going to help securely hold the bike in place. And the cradles themselves are made of a, a softer uh, rubber plastic material. It's going to help to protect the bike's frame. As we load up the bike, we want the down tube to be on the same side as our anti-sway cradle. Once we have it resting in our two cradles, we'll simply come through and secure it with our straps. For the women's style frame, we did use the Thule bike adapter bar. This is part number TH982XT. Now we'll take the extra strap that comes provided with the rack we're going to run it through the frames of our bike. This kind of helps connect the frame of the bike rack with the frames of our bike for just an extra level of security. And we'll just cinch that down. With that secure, we're ready to hit the road. With our rack loaded to capacity, we're going to take it through our test course so you can see what it looks like in action. We'll first go through our slalom course, which will simulate everyday turning side to side. Go through our alternating bumps, which will simulate the twisting effect we get on potholes and uneven roads. And 
and then through our regular speed bumps, you can see how that rack moves up and down. And that will complete today's review of the Thule Passage, part number TH-911XT.